course, here are sisters and brothers and brothers and sisters who come out this time and this way to gain wisdom and understanding from our Creator. In order to do that, <clears throat> we turn to Deuteronomy 18, verses 15 through 20 in our Hebrew Bibles. Deuteronomy 18, verses 15 through 20. Your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of my God any more or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then God replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet. You shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words of that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. Our reading today from the New Testament takes us to Mark during this time of Epiphany. We are still in the weeks of Epiphany as we approach Ash Wednesday and the time of Lent. And uh, so we want to turn to Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through 28. That's Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit. And he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and get out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying with a loud voice came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits and they obeyed him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Hear the words of the Gospel of Mark. Are you speaking with God's voice or your own ego's voice? Frank Fulsgrove was a Lakota medicine elder and spiritual leader of the Lakota people, of uh, the Lakota spiritual path. He was a uh, Teton Sioux, actually, and I believe he lived on Pine Ridge Reservation, if I remember correctly. And uh, many people describe him best as being one uh, it was compassionate, caring, uh, easy to get along with, a uh, joyful person, but also one who was deeply concerned with the uh, social injustices, the poverty, and the oppression that was uh, suffocating the spirit of the people and their willingness 
to walk in harmony with Creator and all of creation. I remember uh, Grandpa had nothing but respect for him. Talked about him many times. And one of the uh, one of the the parts of Frank Full Scroll that stands out for me is the thing that I remember was a story about how there was this uh, healing ceremony that needed to be done. And he prepared the sweat lodge ceremony, which is the purification lodge ceremony, one of the purification ceremonies that, that we use. And uh, that when the fire was put together, it was put together with no wood. That just the stones were stacked in the fire pit. The ceremony proceeded as if the fire had been lit. The smudging took place, everybody went in. And when the stones, it came time for them to be brought in, that he had prayed over the stones. And when they brought the stones in, they were glowing red hot with no fire. And they were able to do the healing ceremony. That is the kind of presence and power that I'm used to being around. And likewise, uh, using. That is an indicator of a prophet of God. When miracles happen, it's the norm. When things are right and in a good way, uh, wonderful interventions take place that amaze the people, that assure the people of God's presence. And one of his other great concerns was that, you know, who is going to carry on this prophetic tradition within the American Indian community? Who's going to rise up in the 21st century to speak for the people, to speak God's voice? to help the people, all the people. Because Frank Fosgrove was also famously known for his willingness to help all people, regardless of who they were. And uh, such is the way of a true prophet, that there is no discrimination and no separation. We are all children of our creator. Alexander Campbell, one of the co-founders of the, uh, the Christian Church Disciples of Christ denomination, it is said, didn't really believe that the Holy Spirit was still working through people today, that he believed that we come to know God and accept Christ through reason and understanding. And that's the, that's the place that he came from in his desires to establish uh, unity among all Christians. Barton Stone, on the other hand, who was also one of the co-founders of the denomination, came from a different background, a different direction. He firmly and adamantly believed that the Spirit of God lives in, around, and among each and every one of us. And in that sense that we all have the ability, those of us who believe and are willing to accept God's blessing of spirit within us, to speak for God, to share God's voice. And in that sense, are we not all prophets in this world? And are we not all responsible for making sure that the voice that we share is actually God's voice? And not our own, with our own agendas, our own expectations, our own uh, ego gratification. Sometimes it's hard for people to tell the difference. And that's when it gets really scary. 
but it is important to tell the difference. And we see this in, uh, in our reading today from Mark, which I'm already at. <laughs> uh, you know, there is a point in this scripture that really stands out to me and startled me when I read it. Every time I read it, I startled. I can't remember how many times I've read it. But every single time I read it, I'm like, wow. And it's this phrase that, verse 22, they were astounded at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes taught. So, and I add the word taught, by the way, it's not as the scribes. They were astounded at how Jesus spoke with God's voice about God, about Scripture, to the people, and not as the scribes. And that paints a picture. Imagine, if you were, you're sitting in this synagogue 2,000 years ago, halfway around the world, and you're expecting the scribe to come up, unroll a scroll, and chant some verses to you. But not really to tell you anything inspirational. Not going to tell you anything that you didn't already know. But you're kind of going through the motions. That's, that's the image that is painted here. For me, anyway. But when Jesus got up there, when Jesus stood before those people, and he read those scriptures, or sang those scriptures, and he taught, he taught in such a way that it inspired the people, it shocked them, it made them look at themselves, their lives, their choices, their behaviors, their motives. It startled them out of their comfort zone and put them in a new place, a new way of thinking. And it was so powerful that it says here that just then a man, just then there was a man, so presumably this person was not in the synagogue at the time that Jesus was teaching, but something happened during that teaching time that this man came into the synagogue. What are you doing here? Are you here to pick on us? Of course it's the unclean spirit, what many people call demon, but According to Judaic definition, it's an unclean spirit, which basically means a disembodied spirit that is not in harmony with itself or with God. And it had possession of this individual, right or wrong, good or bad, that was what was going on. But the unclean spirit thought that the sole purpose for Esau coming there was to persecute him. And apparently it it upset you saw that this happened. He was a little miffed. And in short order, he took care of it. He said, shut up. He said, he told him, get out of there. Get out of this guy. And the unclean spirit obviously didn't want to go, but didn't have any choice because it was commanded with the power and authority of God for this unclean spirit to hit the road. We don't know where Jesus sent this unclean spirit. But it did leave the man. And we didn't get to see the reactions of the people in the synagogue to see this happen right in front of them, unexpectedly, unawares. The manifestation of God's presence and power right there in front of them. I think Barton Stone would have loved that myself. I don't know exactly how Alexander Campbell would respond to that, but I think Barton Stone would have loved it. And we go back now to Deuteronomy, where this should come as no surprise to us. Because according to our reading in Deuteronomy, prophets are supposed to be able to do this kind of stuff. It's expected. Prophets speak with authority. Well, they're talking about the same authority that Jesus saw in this world. 
That is the authority that God has bestowed upon us. Just like God's power and presence was bestowed upon Frank Fool's Crow, and he was able to do wondrous things in his life. His grandpa has been able to do wondrous things. When you see these things happening, you know that you're talking or listening to a prophet of God. When the healings take place, when the interventions take place, you know that this person is speaking with authority. And you better listen. And likewise, when God uses each of us to do these things, each of you to do these things, the people around you had better listen. Because God says, there is a consequence to not listening. Is God going to judge us and condemn us? Well, the way the scripture is written here in Deuteronomy kind of looks that way, but there is another view of looking at that. And that view is that if we don't listen, if we don't heed the words that are spoken, we're setting ourselves up for more trouble, not because God's going to punish us, but because we're going to make our lives harder just by not paying attention, not being a part of what's going on. We're going to make our spiritual journey more difficult for ourselves. So God doesn't have to punish us. We do enough of that ourselves. And the message that Jesus spoke in every aspect, especially in the synagogue, the message that Jesus spoke was very succinct, very clear, so that everyone could understand. His message is about always about, including here in Mark, helping to improve the quality of people's lives, which is what he did for this man who was suffering from the unclean spirit. He helped this man out right there in front of everybody else. His primary concern was helping to improve the quality of people's lives, to help them to trust in God in a way that they had never done before. So when we make our decisions in our daily lives, whatever they might be, or in our churches, in our congregations, in our communities, are our motives about helping to improve others or just ourselves? Are we looking at being of good service or are we looking at serving ourselves? And so we have this responsibility to pay attention to these things. Or if we do not, if we turn away, we turn to harm, we turn to dissonance, we drive people away from us, we make things harder for ourselves. Remember, are you joyful and considerate of the needs of others or just yourself? And as believers, we must guard our voices to ensure that we are speaking in a good way, a way that reflects the heart of God in this world. Walk in you.